sirs. What's good? We are bike with another mock draft since it is Friday. Give me one second while I turn the Lizites on. And since it's Friday, and we always do mock drafts. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. All right, all right, all right, all right. I'm in it. I'm in it for the for the long haul, people. So uh, so yesterday, if you watch yesterday's video, I did a mock draft, but that was only because I got on someone else's podcast. And that's just happened to be what they wanted to do. Um, but my regular scheduled Friday mock draft is this bad boy. And we're going to do a two-quarterback mock draft. So basically a super flex. I've been getting a lot of interest around this type of league. So we are on Fantasy Football Calculator. Uh, we're going to do a 10-team league, two-quarterback draft, which means you need to start two quarterbacks. I'm picking from the ninth spot. That was the only one that was just open at the time when I saw it at least now the one two three spots are open someone's playing tricks on my in my mind just signed up for the auto zone rewards Carl let's go I just spent 50 you know what's messed up bro like I'm, I'm I consider myself a pretty smart dude right I'm, I'm pretty in tune with like a lot of normal things that you would need to know as a human being between technology and just like personal skills and all these kind of things I will never be good at knowing anything about cars i'm horrible if i walk into an auto zone and there's something ruined in my car like that for instance the reason i went there was because my my the ac is warm in my car now it's not blowing out cold air so i need to get something fixed i could walk in there and they could be like yeah well you need to fix the carbonator radiator and get up uh, an air filter right in there and pour some of this li like i'd be like okay just here's my credit card let me know when we're good to go um so that's the thing. And now I just spent, I don't know, like 60, but not, not really that much, but like 60 bucks. I had to get two filters and some antifreeze and stuff. So I don't know what's going on. I feel like it's not going to work. I just feel like a loser when I walk into a car place and I don't know anything about it. But that's just something I've never been interested in. What I am interested in is doing two quarterback mock drafts. I'm picking from the nine spot. We saw four running backs and then a wide receiver go off the board. Now, if you don't play in super flex leagues, one, you should, because I feel like super flex are definitely the most enjoyable league types. Um, in the world and what two quarterback means is you have to start two quarterbacks so they are at a much higher demand in drafts and they start going a lot earlier and I'm actually shocked that Aaron Rodgers has not gone yet because he is a perennial first round pick in two quarterback mock drafts now my my mock my strategy when I'm doing super flex leagues or two quarterback leagues um, I mean you have to look at it from a mathematical standpoint okay so I've, I'm actually someone who goes always goes with like late round quarterbacks, right? And I like to wait to draft my team in, in that sense. But I'm actually going to go with A-Rod here just to switch things up for you guys because otherwise it's just going to drop and I'm not going to be able to, you know, I don't pick for a while after these two picks. A-Rod won't make it around the turn here. And um, God, you guys are going to keep seeing those text messages. Just say team dying. I swear I'm not that depressed. Um, so I'm going to take A-Rod here just for fun to see what happens, right? Took A-Rod, first quarterback off the board. The reason is, think about it this way. There are 10 teams. Normally, or a lot of people are in 12-team leagues when they do super flex, which means you have to start two quarterbacks. You never want to start a, a skill player in the in the quarterback slot. If there's a, if, if you're able to, that's a horrible pick, Deshaun Watson there. If you're able to start two quarterbacks, you always do it. Because think about it logically. The floor of a, of a quarterback in fantasy football is pretty much 13 points, right? Like, you have to have a horrible quarterback to not score 13 points. In that flex spot... The only way you're getting someone who's consistently giving you 13 or more fantasy points per game is going to be a, a high-end player at whatever position they're going to be. That's like a low-end RB1. Um, and at that point, those guys, if you have a low-end RB1, he's not fitting in your flex spot, right? He's going to be in your RB1 slot or RB2 slot at um, at lowest. So there's no reason for you not to have a quarterback there. So imagine you're in the 10 or 12 team league. Each person is starting two quarterbacks. That automatically takes either 20 or 24 quarterbacks right off the board, which means there are only 32 starting quarterbacks in the NFL. So that leaves only eight, pretty much eight or 10 quarterbacks that you can have on your bench or that are, are going to be on the waiver wire. But in no super flex leagues are there going to be quarterbacks left, starting quarterbacks left on the bench. Ah, oh, shit. It was my pick. Um, That's perfect. Because I, I, I mean, I would have went and Leonard Fournette there, but same principle, I would have went with the running back there. Now, Aaron Rodgers is in a tier by himself, in my opinion, when it comes to quarterbacks. 
He's the only one I would even think about going with early in a two quarterback or a super flex league. Normally, I never take a quarterback this early, but wanted to switch things up. Deshaun Watson up there. One, I, if you've heard my videos before, I think he's a huge bust candidate this year in term, not in terms of like overall fantasy wise, but just you know the way his outlook is is going into 2018. Um, he was incredibly efficient last year to the point where it's not even close to be repeated. Um, their defense is going to be a lot better, so they're not going to be in shootouts. And uh, he's just not in a good position to repeat the numbers that he did last year. And he's being way overdrafted as a quarterback, too. So I wouldn't even think of him here. Um, but but my normal my normal way I go about drafting in two quarterback leagues is I think of it. Uh, I talk about this in my Big Dogs Bible, which is in my draft guide. You basically want to think of any quarterback league as your last viable starter. Who are you comfortable with in your quarterback slot as the last viable starter? Right. If you look at the names, the rankings down here, who is the last one on this list that you'd be perfectly fine starting as your quarterback in fantasy football this year? For some of you guys, it's going to be Matt Ryan might be the cutoff. For other people, it might go all the way down to Mitch Trubisky. Right. You have to figure out who that is for you. Whoever that is, that's that should be telling you that you don't have to pick a quarterback until that last viable starter is about to be picked on the board. And that could be you. Right. You wait that you wait that long for it. Now, I do the same. I, I normally would do the same approach in a two quarterback league is that you find your last viable starter, right? For me, it would be maybe um, like Marcus Mariota here. Um, and I make sure that Marcus Mariota is on my team. It doesn't have to be specifically him, but it needs to be two quarterbacks that rank as far down as Marcus Mariota or above. So it doesn't matter if you choose quarterback one and quarterback seven, right? Like Aaron Rodgers and Ben Roethlisberger, or if you choose quarterback 15 and 16, Philip Rivers and Marcus Mariota. The point of it is, if you're comfortable starting Marcus, Mar Marcus Mariota as your last viable starter in a one quarterback league, then that should be the same principle in two quarterback leagues. But you have to make sure you draft someone above him also that you have ranked above him at least. So that's where we have. So I have Aaron Rodgers and we've seen five quarterbacks go off the board. And I'm honestly surprised more haven't gone. Um, and I'm thinking about taking another quarterback, but I'll probably wait because I can probably get another one on the turn later because I'm okay having a lot of these guys as my quarterback too. Um, so I'd be looking at the running backs here still, look at wide receivers who's left. I love Stefan Diggs. I love T.Y. Hilton. Um, but I have Joe Mixon and Jarek McKinnon both ranked ahead of him. So I'm going to go with Jarek McKinnon. I'm still just, uh, taking my favorite guys, my best players available here in these spots. And we'll see what he does at the turn here. Uh, but that's really my strategy. Otherwise, I'm drafting pretty normally. Um, and I always want to have at least a third quarterback, at least a third starting quarterback. Okay, so he went two wide receivers there. Um, so I like T.Y. Hilton. I have T.Y. Hilton uh, ranked above Joe Mixon, I believe, in my rankings. Uh, so I'm going to grab T.Y. Hilton here after I grab two running backs. Perfectly fine with that. And... Um, Forget what I was even saying. Yeah, so I draft pretty much normally outside of those two quarterback rules, but I want a third starting quarterback because if you just think about it, right? If you only grab two quarterbacks, one, I mean, you you just have to have a third quarterback because they're going to be bye weeks. So you have to make sure that you grab them because logistically speaking, right? If there's 12 teams in your league, they're all going to take two quarterbacks, 24. Eight remaining starters are left, which means by mathematical equations, there are going to be four teams that are left without a third quarterback. What happens when bye weeks hit? If you don't have another starting quarterback, you're missing out on 15 to 25 points that week. That's going to be pretty much an auto, law, uh, an auto loss. So you want minimum three starting quarterbacks. If you, you know, if you see value with a fourth quarterback, I'm perfectly fine going with that as well. Because listen, those are going to be super valuable. There are going to be quarterbacks each year that bust. There are going to be quarterbacks that get hurt each year. And those those quarterbacks, their trade value is super super duper high in um, in two quarterback and super flex leagues. So grabbing a fourth one is not bad if you can get good value on it. Like you can grab a third quarterback before you grab your second starting wide receiver or whatever. You know what I mean? So don't be shy to to grab too many quarterbacks because they're going to be super super valuable from a trade standpoint. Let's see who we got going off the board. All right, so Jimmy went, Drew Brees, Cam Newton. Ooh. I like Darius Geis here. I hope he follows to me. Matt Ryan went 
there. I, I, I like grabbing Matt Ryan a lot as my QB, too, because he's usually falling. He went 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So Matt Ryan went as quarterback 9. Wow, that's pretty surprising. 9, 10, 11. Uh, Big Ben went. If Stafford falls to me here, I'm pulling the trigger. Actually, if Andrew Luck falls to me here, I'm probably pulling the trigger, too. So if either of those two guys does, I'm looking for them. Um, hopefully, uh, neither of these guys have grabbed a quarterback yet, so I'm assuming that they're both going to go quarterback, quarterback here. Um so my thoughts on Andrew Luck, and I, I think I've talked about this multiple times and probably in the last few videos that it, it, all we need to hear, I mean, they already said he's going for training. He's going to be full go for training camp and he's going to be playing in their first preseason game, which is exactly what you need to hear. Oh, there goes Jared Goff. Perfect. They went Jared Goff before Stafford and Andrew Luck. That's unbelievable. Um, Andrew Luck's going to be out there for the first game. All we need is one video to surface of him throwing the ball nicely, him connecting with T.Y. Hilton on a deep pass, and boom, his ADP is back up to a top six or seven fantasy quarterback. Same with T.Y. Hilton. So if I can grab Luck and Hilton here, I'm perfectly fine with that at value. Um, and the thing about if I can pair Andrew Luck with Aaron Rodgers, man, if Andrew Luck hits, wow, neither of them went. Damn. Uh, Here's, I'm going to go with Andrew Luck here, and the reason is because the guy after me picked Deshaun Watson, which tells me that he is okay picking risky players, right? So that's something that you got to keep an eye on. you got to know your draft. you got to know the guy in front of you and the guy behind you to get a better feel for what you think he's going to go with. So there is less likely of a chance that he picks Stafford than Andrew Luck. So I would go with Andrew Luck here hoping that Stafford went back to me because I would be fine getting Stafford as a third quarterback here. Um, I probably won't pull the trigger there if Darius Geis falls back to me again, but I'm just saying I would, I would be perfectly happy with that there. I think he'll go with one, at least one quarterback here, but Andrew Luck, if Andrew Luck comes back healthy and he plays like even at 85% of what he's used to being, that Andrew, Aaron Rodgers, Andrew Luck combo is going to be straight filth, straight filthy. There you go. See, like I said, he is less likely to pick Stafford. Because he is risk avert or not risk averse. What's the, what would be the, the play there? So he went with Pat Mahomes, another risky pick by most accounts this year. So Stafford did fall to me. This is pretty much what I was talking about. So uh, I'm not going to go with Stafford again, um, just because there are like really good wide receivers and running backs that I like. Um, I would be deciding between Fitzgerald here, who is basically the only real weapon in that passing game outside of David Johnson, and I love Darius guys. For him to fall into the sixth round, I feel like is actually crazy. I love Geis, Miller, Sonny Michel, uh, Alex Collins too. Coming around to the fact that I kind of want Alex Collins in every one of my leagues. Um, but I, I mean, I have my mid-round video. I'm going to go with Geis here to sure up my flex spot. Um, I had that mid-round with highest upside video where I talked about Alex Collins a lot. And then all of a sudden, uh, Evan Silva tweeted out something the other day about, let me bring it up if I have it here. Show you one of my tweeters. If you don't follow me on Twitter, I highly suggest you do that. I think I do some of my best work on the on the Twitter gram. Where are you at, Evan Silva? Let's see. I'm gonna do a video soon looking at the Vegas odds for all these different player props, like NFL rushing leader, passing leader, and kind of break down what I think is um, good odds and and what fantasy impact that has. I think you guys will enjoy that video. I think it'll be a cool one. Um, where is this Alex Collins one? There isn't much question. So this is a video from uh, beat reporter out of Ravens camp. There isn't much question. Alex Collins is the feature back here. Boom. That was right. That was after that. Um, I talked about um, him as one of my highest upside guys. Wow. Matt Stafford in the sixth round. Derek Carr went before him. Don't do this guys. If you are, um, drafting and don't wait for Derek Carr to be your quarterback one or this guy got lucky he waited all the way to here and got Matt Stafford uh, that's that's computer anyways but see we're getting down to the later round quarterbacks now um and if you haven't picked one or if you didn't pick your quarterback too and you're not comfortable starting one of these guys then you're kind of you're going to put yourself in a bad spot um so normally I wouldn't go with Aaron Rodgers first but I really like how my team is ending up turning out right now and let's see what wide receivers we got on the board man Kind of hoping I could pair a Sammy Watkins with a Corey Davis here. I like that. Um, Allen Robinson this far is pretty down. I mean, I'm 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 pretty low on Allen Robinson this year, especially compared to almost every other analyst. Uh, but again, guys, we all make mistakes. Like we all do things that are wrong year in and year out. We'll pick players that are bad and we'll avoid players that are good. So you have to know that going into drafts. If you're in a lot of drafts, right? If you're in like 
six or seven redraft leagues, it's a good idea to diverse to diversify the revenue all over the place. Um, so although I might not take a guy like Allen Robinson in most of my leagues, I might take him like in one or two spots just because I, I know going into the season, I'm going to be wrong on a bunch of stuff. I know he went off the board, so I don't know I'm going to talk about it, but let's see what running back. I feel like there's still better value at running back. Um, and I would probably take a quarterback here with one of my next two picks as well, just to have that third starting quarterback on my bench. And it would probably be James Winston or Dak Prescott. Let's see. I'll wait till the next one around so I can grab one of these skill players first. Um, so I'm going to go with a running back here. And it's because the wide receiver depth is so good. I think at my next turn, like when it hits, you know, back here again, I'll still be able to land like a Randall Cobb, um, Chris Hogan, that's so crazy that he's all the way down there still. So there's much more depth at wide receiver than running back. And like I was just saying, I love Michelle. I love Alex Collins. Um, and I'm going to go with Collins here just because he's really, really gained some steam in my brain, in my in my brainium up here. Big fan of Alex Collins. So I have four pretty solid running backs there. Um, I'm Sony Michelle. And I'm going to go with my third quarterback here. And I'm not sure if it's going to be... Deciding between Dak and James Winston, I think Dak's getting crazy disrespect. He has such high, um, such high rushing floor. Each year, he's just he's put up I think like six rushing touchdowns, um, either five or six. But either way, he's giving you a solid floor, and I think he's he he it's recency bias. Jesus Christ, Christopher, it's recency bias to the point where he's getting disrespected now that he's a value. But I'm going to go with James Winston because he can sit on my bench. And then when he comes back, he's going to be an absolute stud. One of my favorite players this year coming into the year. Um, when you look at the pace that he was on for those 11 games that he actually played a full game in last year. He was on pace for 4,900 passing yards and I think 30 touchdowns, which would have been good for quarterback two last year. Only behind Russell Wilson. So James Winston was low-key a beast when he was on the field. And uh, when he comes back after week three, he'll be ready to go. And it should be good news all around. So I'll take my third quarterback there. Absolutely no problem. Um, and then I'll start to, probably because I have four running backs, I have three quarterbacks. I look at tight end and see what's up. Uh, I see that Delaney Walker still creeping there. Let's go. If he can fall back to me, I'll gl gladly take him as well as another wide receiver to start padding my depth. Oh, there goes Delaney. Okay, so I put myself in a little bit of a pickle at the tight end position. The same way that I talk about last viable starter for quarterback I like to do that with tight ends as well. Whoever's your last viable starter that you'd be okay, comfortable having, that would be the guy that you'd be aiming for to draft. Wow, J.J. fell all the way here. I didn't even realize that. Marshawn Lynch and Marlon Mack. How did Carlos Hyde go prior to J.J.? That's absurd. Um, regardless. Um, okay, so we're seeing no no real wide receivers going off the board. I like that. Robert Woods, beautiful. These guys are out of control with the way they're drafting. Chris Hogan, I think I moved him up to... Uh, wide receiver 40, I mean, overall like 41 or 42 today in my updated rankings in my draft guide. So Chris Hogan would be the guy I'd be looking at. But dude, I love, see, this is why, like this is why I don't go with wide receivers early because look at all the depth here. Marvin Jones was a wide receiver one last year. Corey Davis has wide receiver one upside. Emmanuel Sanders has great bounce back. Um, I guess capabilities, if you want to say. Chris Hogan, I absolutely love. Randall Cobb, uh, I did that video on... Um, bounce back players where Randall Cobb was like 30 minutes of the video. Okay, so we want Corey Davis. I'm just going to creep around a little bit. I love Royce uh, Royce Freeman here as well. Okay, so tight end. So guys I would be looking at are, I get, I don't really, I don't love Trey Burton. I like, I like George Kittle a lot here. Um, so I would probably grab Kittle because he's probably my last viable starter that I'd be okay having in my lineup. Um, you look at Jimmy G or Jimmy field goal, as they like to call him. All right. So also this is another trick. Like this guy already took Evan Ingram. So there's no shot. He's going to be taking another tight end here. So I'd be looking for a wide receiver first. Uh, I'm going to go with Chris Hogan here. You'll know. Okay. Well, they took Marvin Jones. Either way, it's going to be, be between Chris Hogan and Marvin Jones. So you'll get the point though. I wanted my wide receiver two there. Um, so he's not going to go to the tight end again. So I knew that George Kittle will get back to me. However, if I went George Kittle, there's a good chance. See, he went Chris Hogan. Okay. They, why did they just take George Kittle from me? Oh, no, I timed out twice, and it cannot draft manually. That's disrespectful. Okay, so we're just going to have to talk through the rest of the draft because I guess I'm done drafting. I didn't even time out there. That's out of control. Nick, eat a smurf. Hello, Nick. It's a mock, you douche. <laughs> why are they, like, why are they yelling at me? 
on the in the chat. What did I do? Um, so, so yeah, so now I have the two wide receivers. I have my tight end. Um, I forgot what I was about to say at the tight end. Yeah, so, you know, you look at the San Francisco makeup of that team, um, and they didn't have, they don't have any red zone weapons. They don't have, uh, they have Marquis Goodwin, who's like a speedster, and he's more of like a dynamic threat. They have Pierre Garcon, who's never been a, um, who's never been a touchdown scorer. He scored like four or five touchdowns each year. Um, they bring in Jarek McKinnon and George Kittle, who I who I think are going to be the main scorers this year. Um, Jer- Jimmy G is a guy who puts up a lot of yards, but can't really, you know, he's had trouble scoring. And maybe it's because he hasn't had red zone oppor- or red zone weapons there. Um, and George Kittle could be that dude. So I'd still I, now is when I'd be looking to pad these wide receivers absolutely, and they're going to auto pick for me because again I timed out twice. Can't believe they don't have a, a weapon like a thing that just lets me. Tell, tell them I'm back, but I would be looking at, um, it'd be Randall Cobb for me, would absolutely be my next pick. And then I would probably go with Alan Hearns after that. Y'all know I love me some Alan Hearns. I think he's a clear-cut wide receiver one in that offense, and I think um, I think they're only going to be able to support one, but I'm fine with that because he should see a ton of targets uh, with Dez and Jason Witten both out of there. Come on, my guy. Unless I saw a great value at running back. Eh, I do love carry on. I do love Isaiah. I mean, uh, Rex Burkhead here and Jamal Williams. Oh, there is some good value still at running back, but um, I apologize for the text in the top right. My friends are the most immature. Oh, perfect. They took Randall Cobb for me. <coughs> So I go Randall Cobb and um, yeah, I ain't mad about Jameson Crowder or those guys. Oh, maybe I could just put them in my queue and they'll, they'll pick for me. That works. So he went Rex Burkhead. This guy's pretty sharp right behind me, except for the Deshaun Watson pick. Let's see what quarterbacks are left. There's still a couple starting quarterbacks there. Tannehill, Dalton. Okay, so I got four wide receivers now. T.Y., Marvin Jones, Randall Cobb, Alan Hearns. Cool with that. Some okay depth. Uh, I have the great quarterbacks already, so we don't discount that because if you have two good quarterbacks in the super flex league, your team's going to do very, very, very well. And I love my running backs. Melvin. I would have went with Leonard Fournette in that first pick instead of Melvin Gordon. Uh, Fournette, we have the reports that he's dropping weight. And anytime the only, only, only red flag that Fournette has is the fact that he is injury prone. His work floor is going to – he has the most carries per game behind Zeke. Um, so they're going to give him 22 to 25 carries a game for sure. Uh, they're going to be on the goal line all the time. He's getting all those goal line touches. He's not going to lose any work to TJ Yeldon and Corey Grant, if we're being serious. Uh, their defense is top notch. They're going to put him in good field position all the time. They're going to mask Bortles. So, I mean, Fournette is just in a perfect situation outside of um, – outside of – oh, Lord. They're just picking players for me. Fournette's in a perfect situation outside of health risks, and him dropping weight is huge for uh, for those lower leg injuries and those lower leg concerns. And uh, just historically speaking, anytime a, a running back that's that's pretty big in size drops weight, it's always it's almost always ended in a really good um, really good ting, I guess you want to say, a good outcome. Um, so it took Nelson Aguilar, Jameson Crowder. Both guys have wide receiver two upside, like top twenty four upside. I think. Basically, T.Y. Hilton should be uh, borderline wide receiver one. The rest of these guys have wide receiver two upside, if not floor, like a Marvin Jones and stuff. So um, although I went running back heavy and quarterback heavy early, I'm perfectly fine with the way that my wide receivers turned out. So I think we got a really solid squad. If you play two flexes, you're going to throw Geis and Alex Collins in there. Or if Randall Cobb emerges and, and does what I think he will with Aaron Rodgers, then I have, well, if both these quarterbacks perform, then that probably means both of these wide receivers perform, T.Y. Hilton and Randall Cobb, and I have both of them on my team. So this is a major upside play here. Both If, if everything clicks right for my team, this this would probably be a championship team, considering I, I paired quarterbacks with wide receivers. I don't know how many rounds this is uh, this thing goes for, to be honest with you. Uh, they're just going to pick. Okay, they picked a defense for me. Um, I love Baltimore as my week one defense or New Orleans. Oh, okay. So it finished. This is the final team right here. A-Rod and Andrew Luck as my two quarterbacks. Like I said, you want to grab at least three 
Um, if you want to grab four, I'm okay with that because you will get great trade value and there will be busts and there will be guys who flame out and there will be guys who get injured throughout the year. So having as many backup quarterbacks as, as you want is not a bad idea. Went with two running backs after that. Um, guys that I absolutely love. Melvin Gordon, Jarek McKinnon, love Darius Geis. Alex Collins has crazy, crazy upside. Um, T.Y. Hilton, as long as Andrew Luck is healthy, which I expect to happen. Uh, T.Y. Hilton should be in store for another really good year. And we have Marvin Jones all the way in the ninth round, which I feel like is crazy, crazy value. So I'm happy with that. I got George Kittles, my starting tight end. Um, big breakout candidate. Obviously, we saw him finish really strong down the stretch last year with Jimmy G. Um, so thinking he's going to continue that into 2018. Then we got four wide receivers with some pretty good floor and upside uh, going into 2018. So as long as like one or two of those hit, we're going to be perfectly fine. And I think that's going to wrap it up for today. So if you all enjoyed, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you're new. We'll be doing uh, In the Muck Monday on Monday is going to be Devonta Parker versus Jamison Crowder. Wednesday's video is my top bold predictions for the 2018 season. Um, and then I'm interviewing a few different guys for the channel next week. Uh, we have Dr. Jesse Morse coming on and Andy Holloway from the Fantasy Footballers. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to make it to live stream on Sunday because I'm coming back from Orlando uh, on Sunday morning. So if I'm still alive, maybe I'll try to get onto live stream. But if not, then I apologize. And uh, y'all can catch me on the Twitters or whatnot. So I'll see y'all next episode. Peace.